Megalodon is far and away the most well-known extinct shark, and for many reasons, its massive size being among the main ones. And yet, with all this attention, it passes many by that they do have quite an extensive list of relatives that go underappreciated in the group they belong to, the Otodontids. And one of the most notable of these animals living under Megalodon's metaphorical shadow is Peritodus, the last of the Megatooths. Known commonly as the False Mako or Fako Shark, they at least for now are considered as Otodontids, the Megatooth Sharks, and comprise the three recognised species. These are the early Eocene P. Pavlovi, the middle through late Eocene P. Mangishlakensis, and the Miocene through early Pleistocene P. Binidae, which is the most well known of the three and also the one I'll be talking about mostly from here on. Their teeth, which are found worldwide from New Zealand through to Madagascar and the US, are prized by collectors for their rarity. Given this massive range, it seems therefore that Peritodus was more of a pelagic shark, given that open oceans are seldom represented in terrestrial fossil deposits, and also may be a reason why they survive for longer than their larger relatives. Initially appearing as a smaller shark back in the Eocene, they appear to, over the course of geologic time, increase in size, with the youngest fossils indicating they became one of the largest sharks of their time, estimated in a 1999 study to have measured up to and passed 7.6 metres in length placing them in a similar or larger size range as large orca. The teeth themselves tell an interesting story of their dietary preferences and potential behaviour. The lack of feeding damage seems to show that they mainly preyed on softer bodied animals, though this has been sceptically considered considering how robust their tooth roots are, which seems more evidence that they were fully capable of attacking larger prey, especially considering how large they could get. Instead of developing blade-like teeth to strip off chunks from their prey, it instead seems that with their large roots and curved crowns, they were grasping and grappling with larger prey, restraining and then killing them. Their survival past that of Megalodon, which dies out before them in the preceding Pliocene epoch, seems to be down to both the more generalist diets, allowing them to stave off prey reduction and range shrinkage, considering they were evidently more pelagic than Megalodon were, perhaps allowing them to, at least for a little while longer, stave off the climatic changes through dropping sea levels that were occurring during the time and, with their eventual extinction, bringing an end to the Megatooth shark lineage. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals, and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you for the next instalments of this year's Shark Week.